Let's pray and then we'll get going. See what kind of stuff we can deal with. All right. Thank you, Lord, for today. We thank you for all the pleasant weather we've had. We thank you for the people that have traveled and gotten back safely. We thank you for the fact that we can come and meet today and study your word. That it's what you would have us do in our obedience. And above all, for you, the ones across the street, Lord, that hear a message that may interact with the Holy Spirit and have someone come to a saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. I pray that you be with the ones that we put on that list, Lord, the ones that are having a hard time with different things, that you just work in those situations, that you be with Mom as she, as she winds down her time here on earth, that you would just allow her to have some peace and not so much agitation, and to be with the ones that are with her all the time, just watch over them, be with them. The ones that are down at Courtney Springs, Dave's mom, all of that, take care of them. And just Al's folks, all the other ones, Steve and Joanna, just the ones of us that are learning the next part of life, which is taking care of, take care of our older folks. So in doing so, Lord, we give you all the honor and glory for it, and that we have the strength to carry on. We ask these things in Christ's name. Amen. Mm -hmm. All right. What else? Something else I was going to talk about, but I don't remember what it is. It must be an ARP moment. So there you go, your verse. Put my eyeballs on. Let's see what we do. You done with that, or is it still moving? Anybody else need one? Anybody else need a verse? Sorry about that. We came in the wrong door hole. <laughs> we'll put them in both holes. You want two? No, we just need one. It's a simple one. It's not a big deal. Yeah. It is a big deal, but it's a small one. Thank you. Thomas, did you get one? I think it's that move. Yeah, pray for all those that are on the road. I don't know who might be on the road, who might not be on the road, and who's here and who's not, and who's not working, and who's home with somebody, and all that kind of good stuff. Bob, before we get started. Yes, sir, sir. God asked us. Hold on. Hold on. thing that God asked us to do. All right. Yes, actually, perfection is why we can't do it without the Spirit's name. To love Him with all of our heart, our mind, our strength, our soul. Okay. Isn't. Am I wrong, or isn't that what Jesus did for us with all of his heart sure. and his mind? He's not asking us to do anything more than what he did for us all No, it's even better Christ. than that. He's not asking you to do anything that won't take place if you have the mind of Christ. Right. Uh, you can't. That's like, what people don't seem to understand. You're not going to do it in your own strength. No, that's ever. why I prefaced that you right. said it with the, him doing it. Exactly. But the point all I'm you're doing is, is responding to what you have. Those same conditions. Correct. Were the very same conditions that he did for us that yeah. he's asking us to yeah. do. Yeah, those no conditions have never changed. Right. All right. Before he came, they were the same. When he came, they were the same. After he left, they were the same. All right. That's why it is imperative for people to realize that when you do happen to step into Jesus Christ, you step into a mindset that is 180 degrees out from the world. Okay. That's why it was really neat. I mean, she picked up an Oswald Chambers, another Oswald Chambers book. Um, when she was up, I guess, you know, up, up the cabin, is that what it was? Well, it wasn't this time. I just brought it back. At any rate, <laughs> I was, it was just sitting around, so I was reading it. And as you read things, you already have some mindsets. And I've told you again and again, people don't seem to realize that God and, God and His love are reserved for the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit in triune all the time. That's where His love travels. It does not travel down to man until man picks up Jesus Christ. Once he's, in, he's imputed with Christ, now you're in the loop, so to speak. He is able to love you. He is able to bless you. Well, this was really neat when I saw this. Because, and the verse that goes with it is John 2, 24 through 25. It talks about him not trusting anybody on planet Earth. Who he? Christ could not trust any man on planet Earth. Why? And if you read the verses, because he knew what was in them. Yeah, man had already fallen. Exactly. Yeah. He was already a wreck when Christ showed up. So that was, that was really interesting to find that our Lord trusted no man, yet he was never suspicious, never bitter, 
never in despair about any man because he put God first in trust. So what was it? He used what he had, his mind, knowing the integrity of his father, and he said he trusted absolutely in what God's grace could do for any man. This trigger right here, God's grace for any man, that's anybody that steps into Jesus Christ. Because anybody outside of that is, is, is not going to be able to function the way that grace expects it to function. And the grace expecting you to function is to live with your mindset of Christ. And you could also add plan, I guess. Sure. Heck yeah. I mean, you and I, has anybody gotten a memo from heaven that told you exactly what the plan of God is for your life? You haven't yet? Well, that'll probably come when you get Alexa or something like that, okay? When it can, it can, it can just kind of transpose stuff. I think you already have, Sensei. There's many places in the Bible that well, sure, things that's pleasing to him. Yes, but the problem you have is he's not going to tell you everything because if he does, you, have, you don't have to have faith. Period. All right? I understand that. Correct. But the things that make it work are the things he's put in the Bible that says... Sure. The Doctrine. There's all over the Bible various things. You put them all together, you find that you do these things. Correct. Pleasing. That's exactly right. So, when you're looking at this, Paul had a, had a mindset as a Jew. Now Paul's going to have a mindset as a Christian. And his mindset as a Christian totally wipes out everything that he had in a Jewish mindset. And that's what he's talking about here. But what things were gained to me in Philippians 3, 7, those I count lost for Christ. Okay? Not T. They're not lost. They're loss. What's the difference? Less than you started with. There you go. He was never, ever, 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 ever didn't know where he came from or what he did. But what they mounted up to prior to Christ, he said in his own words, I don't even count them anymore. As a matter of fact, they don't even add into the equation. So that's why he was saying, and this Hatina word that they use here, this <laughs> hopelessness and all that other stuff that's involved in it, it's only used six times in the Bible. And, it, and it's a whatever things, whatever or whoever. It's a very specific. He's talking about um, the, the, the things that made him noticeable on planet Earth as a Jew did not add in to anything that Christ put him into. All right? He pulled out his Jewish card when he needed it. He pulled out his Roman card when he needed it. He pulled out whatever he needed from the loss column when God told him to use it. But it was only under God's tutelage that he did that. He didn't do it any other time. All right? And that's what they're working for. So, And then when it says gain, this is profit. This is anything that adds to you and your work. Yes, sir. You know, I, I just read an interesting uh, a MacArthur uh, uh, outlook on this. And he said, coming through Paul from his accounting business mm -hmm. days is why he's using this terminology of sure. profit and loss. Yes, exactly. Interesting outlook. Yeah. I mean, yes. Oh, so the, the loss is kind of like a junk drawer. Okay. You only go in there when you need something. Yeah, exactly. Okay. If you need it. You look in there, maybe it'll help, but Correct. usually it's not enough. But I have noticed that whenever I look in the junk drawer, the, the ones, the straight screwdrivers that were straight the last time are Phillips this time. <laughs> I haven't figured out how that transition happens in that drawer. There must be some kind of vortex. Yeah. Probably because you really exactly need a Phillips. <laughs> <laughs> Probably what it is. Yeah. But, but yes, that's basically what it is. You pull it out, you look around, ah. God can use this part of what I did before over here. Maybe it's you know, that it, it, chunk it back. Where it was before was something that you were proud of. Oh, yes. But now yes. you see it, it's just a tool yes. that God has blessed me with. Very use. much so. But aside from but what we're talking about here appears to me to apply to be physical things that he considers lost. Another aspect of that I noticed was that he considers these things lost because the time that you're spending focusing on those things to any degree and anything you do with it is lost. Sure. Of your because we we're in we're finite. We only have a certain amount of time. Correct. 
So it's loss in time for us. Yeah. Loss of our energy, our time, death. and our strength. Exactly. As well as being something that is Correct. garbage. But the biggest thing Paul had, had over us is he was totally mm -hmm. sold out as a Jew. He gives you a good picture of being sold out, as a matter of fact. So much that he goes to the big boys and says, give me a list of the Christians you want to rub out. And they, they gave it to him. And then that drastically changed on the, on the road to Damascus. And now he was what? Totally sold out to the other side, so much so that the disciples didn't even trust the guy. Well, it, it makes you wonder why he, and he was chosen. Yeah. I mean, the scales on the eyes, the whole yeah. thing, it's like, you know, he could have not, you know. Correct. <clears throat> How is it that he... I hope they have a, a bunch of good round table discussions when we get to heaven, because yeah. it's going to be fun. I'm going to need every one of them. <laughs> <laughs> How is it that he felt that he was legal and going to other countries where their religion and their people have no jurisdiction whatsoever Correct. to put people in jail and have them killed. Uh, how did those companies, how yeah. did those other countries feel that the authority he thought he had actually represented any authority in their country? Understand something. Not only was he a Jew, he was plus Roman. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. You have ever looked at the Roman Empire over its 400 year run? It was a it was a steamroller. When somebody came and said, "Oh, by the way, I've got a list of people that are a threat not only to me," because he probably didn't use this threat, he used this one. Yeah. You know why? Because he said, "What did they always say about them? They always said they have another king above who." Caesar, yeah. which is automatically going to trigger a bunch oh, okay. of wrestling yeah. matches in okay. somebody's eyes, and that's that's how that little scenario played out. All and the, the Romans were very much into hierarchy. You know, somebody overlooking some, having to report to correct all the way up the line. Correct. So he had, he felt the weight of people looking at him. Correct. And the law that the Caesars established was a, a beneficial law for organization, beneficial law for peace and and tranquility in windows of time, and they used it wisely. And the Christians were going to create a problem in that in that little happy place. So that's why he was granted, you know, that kind of carte blanche to take a list to a different country and, and be able to round these guys up and bring them back. So it was like he used a subterfuge to get his hands on people sure. that he had no business getting his oh, hands on. Oh, sure. But the problem is, when you're deceived, you don't realize... Um, I was talking to Kathy this morning about how the fact that the the chaos that the progressive side of, of our government is creating right now is nothing but a microcosm of what they're going to have during the tribulation. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay? But they're so deceived, they have no clue that that's what they're actually... It's like a test run. Why do I get the impression that the presidents that have gone by, in my mind, represent the value of zero Value has no zero except in relationship to what comes after it, and what comes after it is um, the beast. Well, yeah, that's where everybody's headed, we, they just, but, but when you don't realize it, go ahead, John. No, it was just a thing about Paul, and that was his, his was actually even worse than what we're depicting it as, sure. because <clears throat> not only when he was pulling away from the Romans, that was a heavy-duty work, but he was not yet at that point accepted by the Christians. Right. right. They exactly. were rejecting him as being a spy and stuff, so he's kind of a man without a country yes. for a while. he was for a little while, until he came back out of the desert. He really was. So, he had a, he had a tough, he was a tough guy. I mean, he, he, was, he was put together that way. Now, when it talks about counted something, it says, <laughs> I have deemed something is what it is, is the word that they put together in the books. To esteem as something, to elevate your status, spoken generally of those who have influence and authority. In other words, um, Kathy was telling me something about somebody coming in first in something. I said, yeah, nobody remembers who came in second. In anything, they remember who came in first. Well, that is what this, that is what he's doing. You remember what he said, who he studied under? He, he was very quick to say he studied under Gamaliel who was like uh, top of the line as far as teaching 
in the Jewish side of the, of the, of the ledger. He was the teacher you wanted to have. Uh, she usually goes, when she goes to her classes, she goes and peruses all the different teachers and looks for the ones that look like they're good teachers. Why? You want to get a good result when you're putting your time in. If you transfer to another section of a company, you don't transfer to the bogeys, goofball, nuthouse. You try to transfer up into an outfit that might enhance what you can learn and you might enhance their group. It's always uh, it's, it's that type of arrangement. Well, that's what Paul did all through his life. Okay? You know anything about Benjamin? Is that not the tribe he came from? Yeah. What do you know about Benjamin? They fought, got their butts yeah, wiped out completely. Well, of what they yeah. Did. So, yeah, but the thing is, is Benjamin was always the favored one. Why? He was the last one. He was the baby of the family. He was the baby. Oh. He was the baby of the bunch. So he was always, you know, you don't ever look at the bad side of the baby. You always look at the fact that he's your baby. All right? Am I, am I right? Okay? So that's, what, that's what's going on here, and that's how they portray it. So when he was doing that, he was doing all of this stuff, and he was looking for stature every time he did something. But Christ turned that around for him. Said, and then the Nidia thing, on account of. Okay? Mode, manner, state, or circumstance to which takes place or is produced. How did what happened to him take place? He tells you in the verse. I ran into a guy by the name of Christ. <laughs> Wasn't looking for him. Didn't mean to run into him. But he did. And in doing so, he said, on account of me running into Christ, everything that I used to deem phenomenal, enhancing, resume, puffed up stuff, was now loss. It didn't amount to a hill of beans. Matter of fact, that later on he calls it rubbish. Trash. Okay? Because all he, all of his stuff he was accounted Correct. for before all were represented by the word of various forms Correct. of pride. Yes. And the thing of it is, is when he gets to the word loss, and you look at it, you get, there's a bunch of different definitions, but two of them that come to the top on a lot of the different books is damage and detriment. Or deficit. Deficit would do it. But detriment is kind of bad. What would happen? How often was his Jewishness a detriment? There were times. How many times was it damaging? Plenty of times. A bunch. Got him chunked in jail a bunch of times. So the loss, it, I mean, it's not just him prior to Christ. It's also anything he did while he was saved, right? Correct. So Correct. It's, it, it's a combination of... You, because the, loss, the loss beforehand doesn't count. Okay? No. But while you're a Christian, the loss Correct. is something you had a choice. You could have chosen to do it the Lord's way, or but you chose to do it in your own strength. Right? I mean, is that... Yeah. So yeah. The loss right. before, you really can't do anything about it. It wasn't your call. Correct. But during... You had a choice. There was actually physical loss, too. He lost stuff that didn't amount to a hill of beans to him. How do we know that? Because when he was shipwrecked, he had his stuff with him. What made it to shore? Nothing. Him. Yeah. <laughs> okay? So you see how these things are being put together? So he says, do yourself a favor when you're doing this. Understand that whatever you think is important here now, get with Christ enough, and all that stuff will not be important. It will not hold you back. It your will not be a problem change. to you. Your values will change. definitely change. Most definitely change. Okay? And that's why he puts a little verse like that can be amazing when it comes to tearing it apart because you don't see it that way. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, because uh, God said that uh, it's not about uh, Oh, yes, ma'am. Oh, shucks, yes. How much did Paul lay up in heaven after, after his Damascus Road thing? He had some really good piles. Then he had some piles that were going to get burned up. When he slipped home and had his, did his little hairdo thing and, and you know, had a couple of conversations with mom and dad and thought maybe I might have to go back to Judaism for a while and I might be uh, off target with my Christianity. Yeah, he's got a little burn pile. Okay? But there are a lot of things that he did because if you even talk to a Jew, when they list their family tree, they throw Paul into the mix. 
Why? Because he was a Jew's Jew. They don't look at it beyond that. But he was a Jew's Jew. So that's pretty much how that was put together. And it was intentional. Um, how many times do you look around and see how much enhancing material you can, you can, that's a different way. How many times does your mind take over when you're putting a list together as to what will make you look good? Every time until it finally occurs to me, what are you doing, Steve? You didn't ask <laughs> yeah, really. Me. Until somebody smacks you upside the head. Or I mean, I fill out a resume. Yeah, but well, there you go. Yeah. You're right. Oh, should I put that on? Yeah. It makes me look a little puffy, doesn't it? Yeah. I mean, but the thing of it is, is you do that because the world tells you to do it, but how do you do it in Christ? How do you have, what kind of resume do you have in Christ? Okay. I mean, there's times when, when you look at and you say, well, um, what have I done over the years? And you want to see a pattern of increased obedience, increased study. That's the kind of patterns you want to see. But you can't judge yourself. No, you can't. You try because that's your human nature, but no. You are ultimately held up against what? The ultimate judge is going to be Christ. And like I said, I don't think we realize the gravity of the words how are you doing, my good and faithful servant? I am tickled, slapped to death that you're here. I've been waiting for you. i got this place put together for you. You can move in immediately. And really, when you boil it down, <laughs> the nebulous of everything you've done good yes. is down to that, that statement right. that you're working for. Correct. If I, to me, I think if you're making a checklist, if you're patting yourself on the back, sure. that's a formal works. Yes. Yeah. Sort of. Oh yeah. yeah, it is. And the thing of it is, is everybody figures, well, I'm going to have a really beautiful home in uh, what's that place down there in, in Satellite Beach, Lansing Island. When I get to heaven, I'm going to be on Lansing Island. Okay. Okay. And then you have a list of people that are going to be on that. On that. Julie said she didn't know what that was. So oh, I'm Lansing Island is where you got to check through the gate to get in and so. every <laughs> house. But I do know one thing. Termites like rich people's houses yeah. as much as they like <laughs> as much as they like poor people's homes. So, but at any rate, and then there's going to be this list over here, like what I'm on, that says Colony Park. Okay. I mean, that's that's my that's yeah. You know, this is where my house is going to be hanging out. We will be glad to have any house. Uh, exactly. Yeah. But my house is in heaven. I don't really care what the address is. Right. Only humans do this. God says you're here, and you're here. Now, let me show you what you did for being a mature Christian, and you can't get away from that. That's all through the book of Revelation. Those first two chapters are packed, slapped full of what happens to a mature Christian and what happens to a run-of-the-mill Christian. People don't like to read that part, but it's there. Which book did you say that was? Say again. Revelation. Revelation. Yeah. Right. Chapter two and three. Right. So, all right. Now, where were we at when we? Oh, you weren't here. <laughs> where were we at? Number four. Number four. On page two eighty-five. Len's doing 20. better. Two eighty. Yeah. You doing more better? Is your sniffer work? <laughs> it's, uh, well, that's good. It's still swirling in there. So. Well, yeah, but big heads don't. They, they go down. It's not a problem. All right. <laughs> <laughs> not a problem. All right. So we were working down through principles as far as legalism goes. And we'll, one was legalism and grace are mutually exclusive, cannot coexist. One is always canceling the other one out. Uh, your job is to determine whether you're on the legal side or on the grace side. Okay? Um, As a whole? Um, I, yeah, I'm, I kind of, I think you could probably do that because I, I always watch the folks that are wanting to be Christians but want to make sure they're hooked to Abraham. That tells me right off that you're, you've got a wrestling match between legalism and grace. Isn't that why they said you can't have your cake and eat it too? Well, pretty much. But the thing of it is, is it's not, it's, it's something you need to determine for yourself because I can't, I don't want to go around beating somebody with a stick every time I think they're, they're going legalistic on me. I, you, the more you study, the more you learn, the more you can see it, okay? But it's not, I don't think it's something you can, you can point at somebody and say, you know, stop. Well, you, if you know them well enough, you probably can get to them and talk to them a little bit. But that's really a personal thing that you've got to 
to deal with and wrestle with on your own. But it might be a Holy Spirit thing. It could be. You know, I mean, you you know when you got to. It could be. That. But but my thing is, it's, it's still a personal wrestling match, and I mean, there's there's hardly any way to get away from that. Legalism abrogates blessings from the justice of God. Why would it do that? Because God can't work with you if you're trying to do something to help Him. Because He needs no help. Exactly. And the thing of it is, is I don't know how you can get away from that. Human nature is that way. I always want to do something. Well, there's times when you, when we were talking about it, you can't always do something. Well, in one sense of the word, on the bad side, you really can't blame yourself or anyone else because the war, the whole world, through your entire life, has spent every minute trying to teach you that. Correct. And that's Correct. kind of hard without Correct. God's help to overcome that. But no, but here's the deal: I now have the mind of Christ. Okay. Please understand something: you now have the difference between truth and truth. Through communication. And this is this is God's, this is the world. And let me tell you something. You better be able to delineate between the two. If there's nothing else you learn in life, learn to figure out. Um, when it tells you something really good like um, work as hard as you can at the church. Do everything they want you to do. When you really should be saying, work as hard as you can in life and shine as a Christian. Well, that would work too, but even that, that's, here's the deal. If the, if, the wor if the world's telling you, or the church or whatever is telling you to, to do everything, you know, we need volunteers, we need volunteers, but the Lord over here tells you something specific, particular to do, do the particular. Okay. Now, I, and it, go ahead. It, it's it's like what I've explained to, to the kids uh, through the years. I said, "There's a lot of work in God's work. There's a lot Correct. of God's work things that can be done." Correct. And I said, "But if I were to tell you to take the trash out, and you ended up going out and cleaning the car, you uh, swept the floor, you did the dishes, you uh, made everyone's bed, you mowed the lawn." But you didn't take the trash out. Like I asked you to take the trash out, were you obedient? No. Correct. You did all the other works, but That's I've already did. had other people to do. Correct. And that trash never got. But taken. you could also check and see if an alien inhabited his body. Just <laughs> <laughs> now, but, yeah, and, 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 but, I did, but I did also say, also as pleasing as that would be. Right. Exactly. You know. Exactly. But that's what we. Well, that's what and we. That's what do. you're talking about yeah, here. Yeah, we tried to go around doing all these things for Correct. God. Correct. And God said, all I needed you to do was whatever it was. <laughs> exactly. Well, it's and a bit of grow where you're planted also. And it's... Yeah. Yes. And that's, but that's the thing. That's why you have to pay attention to this type of stuff. The law was an instrument of justice, an instrument of adjustment to the justice of God produces arrogance. Okay? What we're talking about is since you've got laws and you think you keep the law, you think you're good in your own right. It generates self-righteousness. Motivating a system of self-righteousness. And the system of self-righteousness is you have to go around and find people that aren't doing as much as you so that your self-righteousness looks better than their self-righteousness. Pharisees? Yeah. So that's, that's part of that program, all right? Now, number four, God's righteousness, which is one half of a di divine integrity, and man's self-righteousness are mutually exclu exclusive. How do, you, how do you teach that? How do you get that across to somebody? The moment I go out as the Lone Ranger, I've walked away from the plane. How do you teach that? Well, teach communication first with the Holy Spirit. Okay, that'll help. But if I don't have enough doctrine to tell me where to go, Holy Spirit has nothing on the shelves. He's got to have stuff on the shelves in you as doctrine goes so he knows how to show you where to go, how to do, what to say, where to be. All of these things. And to enable you to do it. Correct. He is perfectly willing to help you and do it, but you have to have the material for him to work with. But you can't take a, a, a blank slate. He's not, that's, that, that's robotic. But You can't do that. Even like what Donnie said, if he was taking out the trash and everything he told him to do, but he was doing it in his own strength, <coughs> saying, I'm doing God's work. No, you're not. God Correct. does his work. Correct. And some people get burned out doing 
maybe what they were supposed to do, but with the attitude that I'm doing it myself and I don't have enough strength to do it. Sure. It but then the Bible itself, which has obvious exceptions to everything, one of them would be Paul, because he was dealing with an empty slave. Correct. Matter of fact, a negative slave. Yes. And he took him and pulled him aside for three years, filled that puppy up, and then turned him loose. Okay? But at the same time, it's it's that type of deal that you're that you're looking at here. I Clerics are very bad about self-righteousness. It is really, really hard to control. Okay, why? Because you're a doozer, and a doozer takes gratification in what he's done, which means it's okay. a force of pride because you're not letting God do it through Okay, you. there you go. Okay. Now, you know one of the ways he, he cured me of that? He oh, cured I you? Even, I don't even want to he ask. totally cured me of that. <laughs> You know how he did it? Took one of my eyes. You know what happens when I look at something now? I look at it as somebody that has been damaged. Am I able to do this as I could with two eyes? And he said, well, shucks, son. I'm still working it. You just weren't paying attention last time. Now you are. So that when I start a job in the morning, when I start any job, it is started with Christ. How are we going to do this? What are we doing? Show me what I need to do. Get rid of the obstacles that I don't need to wrestle with. Put the obstacles there that I do need to wrestle with. And when I go through a job like that, it is, a, it is really neat. Just like I, I'm doing a job for a family. I forgot to put him on the paper too. Um, put Austin to red on there. The gentleman I'm putting a bathroom in for and changing doors because I don't know that he'll live long enough to use the shower. But when I went in to do those doors, it was a noble home. You know what a noble home is? It's a prefab. They put the whole house up in 10 days. Okay, is that a noble brand name or a noble description? No, a noble home. Brand it's a noble brand name. A brand brand name. name. That's what I was asking. Is it yes. like the old Jim Walker? Home? Yes, yeah. similar to it. Anyway, I said, okay, Lord, I have no clue what they did here. I knew it. I knew something that went together that fast had odd, oddities to it. All right? The first oddity is the toilet is bolted to the wall. Mm. No drain in the floor. Okay? And I said, Lord, we really don't want to wrestle with that, but if, if Judy wants me to move it up four inches, I will so that it's easier for, for us to get on it with the wheelchair. And, and th then she called right as I was leaving town, and she said, Mommy, I don't want to change that toilet. Said, yes. <laughs> Why? She said, well, we've got that little lift thing on the toilet, and my feet don't hit the floor. <laughs> Common sense. He took care of that problem without the wrestling match. Okay? This is how I've learned to do this because I, part of my arrogance was swept aside. Okay? And you Blinders don't, were taken off. Exactly. Well, one of them was put on, but the other one was just doubled up in bed. But the thing of it is, is it changes the way you think of things. Okay? After all these years, back when that was going on, I had this thought in my head. It was kind of weird. <laughs> about about you you having a conversation going, you know, rather than have my my eye stray, might as well take it from me. And he went, <laughs> all right, <laughs> yeah, really. <laughs> Point. <laughs> well, I don't know what he pulled it out of there for, but the thing of it is, is I learned from it, and I, perfectly, I learned well from it. But the, but it also it enhances it it enhances your communications. You don't want to take a step because you know that you can cause a problem. Um, I watch people make mistakes because of going too fast, which is some. I used to go really, really fast. Well, I still slow down a whole lot, but a little bit. Okay. But the thing of it is, is I'm much more measured in how I go about doing things. Not always, but a lot of it is is been swept away. And he tells me here, when you depend on you in this. Number four it says, when you depend on your righteousness, I can't work with you. So stop. I will not interfere with you and your righteousness. And that's what he's trying to get across here. All right? Now, five. There is no place in salvation adjustment to the justice of God for man's self righteousness or works of righteousness in the Mosaic law, which is what we were talking about before. Determine what is God's law and what is your program. 
How many of you get up and make your list in the morning when you take off for work? A melancholy would always do that, okay? It's, I mean, it's, 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 very, it's, it's part of your nature. All right, now how many times did God change the numbers on the list? Yeah, it's new ones. <laughs> yeah, it's new ones, okay. All right, and the thing of it is, is how do you respond to the changes? You learn. I'm going to change, why? Because he's changed it. It's not because you, do you realize how beneficial it is for him to actually do that in your life so that you know he's there and he's giving you an opportunity to see that he's in charge of your life and he's going to put you where you need to be? You have to learn to look at it that way. Sure. Because a, a, a choleric is going to put the round peg in the square hole. Sure. Just because get a bigger hammer. Overall, yeah. he that's, that's all you're has doing. to limit himself. God has to limit himself to do that. Because he's left his relationship up with us and him to be a relationship of faith. Sure. So if he did it, if he did it any heavier handed than that, we'd stop having so much faith and we'd be able to see his reality as concrete. He doesn't want that right now. With right. Us. Right. The angels had that relationship and a third of them went south over it. Yeah, well, let's put it this way. Okay. Um, when you talk to the Lord, you use the term your will. You better determine what your is. If you want to be a Bill Clinton, partial word. Okay? What is is is? Well, your will. Not your will, your will. That's how your day starts out. If your day starts out with this will, it's gonna be a smooth running day. Except for the bumps. You know what the bumps are? He said, by the way, I've got a package that goes with that. It's called Grace. It's for bumps. Grace for bumps. That's exactly what it is. Oh, man, i got to write that down. What do you do? <laughs> That's pretty cool. That is. When a rocket takes, when a rocket takes <laughs> off and, and, and it doesn't go well, that's a bump. Did you think about that all last night, or did you just not come up? No, with that, that just came out of the side of my head. Holy Spirit, dude. man, that is that okay. is deep, dude. Because understand something here. Because if that rocket's going up and it blows up, what do you got going on here? Uh, it's you're you're. There's a lot of different things going on. There's impound procedures going on. Sat Correct. There's lockdown. Correct. Of the facility. <laughs> um, and the it, whole world gets disrupted. It does. It, it, and, but uh, the benefits of the disruption are what? You learn, you learn from a mistake. Correct. Go forward. How many more flash fires did they have in an Apollo capsule after the first one? Nil. I rest my case. Please understand, that's exactly what God's doing here. <clears throat> he doesn't mind you committing at once. Don't be a serial committer. <laughs> okay? You are, you are just on <laughs> I mean, it just doesn't, it doesn't work. He's, he, I know he doesn't get frustrated with us, but by golly, he can bump it up a couple notches and really bite into you. Okay? That's what you have to pay attention to here. Now, the number six, it says there's no place in rebound or maturity adjustment to the justice of God for man's self-righteousness or works of man, Mosaic law. So what are we doing? I'm self-righteous, okay, and I make a boo-boo, so I want to go back over here and 1-9 it, okay? 1 John 1-9. What's the first request you have to make if you're going to 1 John 1-9, your stupid self-righteousness? First, you have to realize it in yourself, and then you have to confess it so that you're on the same page right. with God. Now, do you see how that starts? First thing I confess is the fact that I was self-righteous. Now you can have a conversation. Believe me. A functional conversation. Without that, um, have you seen Guardians of the Galaxy? Oh, yeah. And he asks them about the orb, and the guy starts giving them something, and he goes, blah, 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 yeah, 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 yeah. Every time the guy makes a statement, that's exactly what the Holy Spirit's doing when you're trying to blab on about what you did with your forgiveness for grace. Okay? 
So yes. speaking of Guardians of the Galaxy, okay, you guys did last week Chris Pratt's speech, yes. and if you have not gone on YouTube, it and looked is up, awesome. it's awesome. Watch it. awesome. And, and that was his number nine, was Grace. Yes, and the it way was he awesome. said it was so unoffensive. Yes. Yet it smacked he just everybody in Hollywood in the face. It was the sweetest layout of, it of was, Christianity it was and Jesus Christ. Yes. Most definitely. And there, was, that was the Grace Bumper <laughs> Okay, That's where I was headed when we started talking. <laughs> but I'm just saying. It was all about Grace oh, he never well, said Well, I try to watch Christ. that movie two or three times a week because it's just too good. Okay. Yeah. But the thing we is, all watch is, it. We yeah. all watch it because I watch it. <laughs> but the thing about it is, is the thing the thing of it is, is that's exactly how the how God and, and then they when you start blabbling on, just like that. Um, yes. What did they do in Charlie Brown? Whenever somebody was saying something, yeah, that's exactly how it goes. Until you clean up the act, and then you can have a conversation, and the conversation can then be, I would like. To let you know that I realized I was being self-righteous, and in my self-righteousness, I stepped over the line. I'm stepping back over the line. I would like back now to be back at your will, and I would like to function the way that you intended for me to function in this particular instance. Have you ever had? I think everybody has had a song. It's gotten stuck in your head. It's driving you nuts, and now you hate it to death, and you can't get it out of your head. What you're talking about when I do that to myself, God has fixed it so that the picture He gives me is Peter on the Mount of Transfiguration, and he's blabbing on and going on, and God just had to stop him up and say, listen, this is my beloved son. Um, hear him. Shut up. <laughs> yeah, that works. Now, is this a song that you're talking about? Which no. one? It's a small world after all. <laughs> oh, no. no, 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 no. Oh, now you got it started. Oh, oh, like it. It. Yeah. it is now, thank you. <laughs> so everybody's going to have to play Gadmill after class. Oh, no. I want to get your guitar out. I got your guitar out. You can actually, that, was, you that, can was actually, a, that was like an inside curve, and I could just knock it out. Like Bobby, you can actually do the first thing with it. it. It's a world of laughter and stop. And everybody helps me get it. <laughs> now everybody's got it. <laughs> All right. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to torture you like that. So, yes, you did. <laughs> Number seven. Self-righteousness directed towards God is blasphemous assumption of legalism. Okay? Understand. Blasphemy. Told you. You're attributing something to God that isn't His. And when you do some kind of good work in yourself and you attribute it to God, remember what those guys said? We cast out demons in your name. And what did he tell those folks? I never did it. I never did it. You're doing it in your own strength. Yeah. I'm sorry, you self righteous son of a pups. Get out of here. I don't want to talk to you. You gotta deflect the glory. Well, like it's it's just it's a given, all right? So, no. Yes, ma'am. The interesting with that though is just because they didn't get anything from it, the person doing the works or whatever. Mm -hmm. But that doesn't mean somebody else can't be blessed. Wasn't didn't Paul say, I'm preaching this way, they're preaching this way, mine's good, and they're trying to get back at me, but either way Christ is preached. Correct. So somebody Correct. can still benefit from it, even if we don't get the blessing for it. It always it all <laughs> sticks with this right here. The truth is the truth is the truth is the truth. Some people present it in a in a fashion that meets um, I remember the guy that was a biker that was here for a while and and when we went to the bridge, he, he had been in a hard life. Uh, Chuck Wilhelm? Yeah. He had had a, but he would have had a heart for people that were out of the mainstream, so to speak. So when we would go down and give tracks to the guys under the bridge that were sleeping when they were sleeping under the Humphrey Bridge. And the thing about it is with him, he was always, now people thought, you know, this is just foolish and stuff, until a few of them started showing up at church. Because when they cleared their eyes up and they actually read the track, there was something that had interacted with them with that little conversation. And the thing about this is the truth, no matter how it's portrayed. Uh, have you ever watched Red Stegall? He's a cowboy um, poet. Well, they have a cowboy pastor that goes around to the rodeos. And he was a he was a a rodeo guy, so he has he knows the terminology. I mean, he always looks like he just climbed out of the ring. He's not always dressed up, and he, but the thing of it is, he's disseminating truth. Another one goes around to the truck stops, and he has an old school bus, and it's a church on wheels. It's very unorthodox, very abnormal. Sometimes you have the truck drivers. Sometimes you have the truck drivers with the hookers they slept with. 
but they all get the truth. Okay? There's no self-righteousness involved in it at all. He doesn't care what people say. He doesn't know who, whose life he's going to change. Okay? That's what they're talking about as far as all this. Now, it says the imputation of God's righteousness, or plus R, is not sufficient, and man must add his own works to the works from, from, from the law. That's what the world thinks. They don't realize plus R is total package. They only understand that I'm plus R, I'm righteous, so everything I do is okay. That's not what it's saying. All right? Number eight, it is blasphemy to assume that either man's self-righteousness or works of righteousness from the law can promote the integrity of God. There are a million good intended people that are nowhere close to where God wants them to be. Sum it up, imperfection can never create perfection. Correct. But they, they don't see it that way because somehow they feel that they have been given the mandate by God to go do such and such. And when you find somebody like that, you got a rough, you got a rough cell. It's just tough to, to, to wrestle with, all right? So that's what they're that's what they're talking about there. And divine integrity has eternally existed in the status of infinite perfection. No creature's works can add anything to the perfect divine integrity. Now, as you go through this list, please understand something. You're being slid off to the side on your works, and you're being pushed to center stage in the grace of God and his divine blessing. He said, if you would get out of the way, you'd be surprised what I could do. One of the things I love about his confrontation when he spoke with Peter was that when he told him, shut up, he didn't do it harshly. Correct. He still did it with love. Yeah. How many times you say, get thee behind me, Satan, to somebody? Oh, a lot. <laughs> oh, is that when they're talking over the counter or something like that? Yes, but you don't know who walks in those libraries. <laughs> <laughs> okay. But the thing is, is that's, that's a nice way of saying, you know, shut up. Okay? So it's, you know, there's ways to do it. And, and how many of you in here ever counsel with other people that feel that you're some source of phenomenal information? Some source of what? How many people come to you for information? They, they want you to counsel them. They want you to work with them. Why, what, how do you talk to them? How are you going to be able to talk to them in a fashion that is beneficial to them and gets the message across? First, you have to find out what they know already. Okay. So okay. you have to undo something they've already done. Correct, which is what Paul did in Mars Hill. All right? Yeah. What did he do the first thing he showed up there? Walk through the plazas. And you don't, do, you, do you have any clue as to what that, um, have you ever seen any pictures of it? The columns? Yeah. Noodles and noodles and noodles and noodles and noodles and noodles of columns. It was a colonnade, okay? And every one of those in beside those cracks in those columns was another god, okay? How many of them were there? Hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of them. It was like a, like a, a strip mall kind yeah, of Yeah, exactly. That's exactly what it was. And then there was okay? The rock. Yeah. I mean, it was Bells and Belks and, and, and Dillards and all the other ones all down through there, and every one of them had their own God. And he went down through there, and as he went through all those gods, he looked. And you know, I guarantee you, the Holy Spirit says, We haven't got there yet. Just wait. Your, yours is coming. Because you know, he, he would say, I'm sure what would he would say? No, that's not my, that, that, there's nothing I can work with here. Nothing I can work with here. All of a sudden he gets to the one. The one colonnade yeah. out of thousands. And what was it, what did it say? Oh! <laughs> <laughs> that was probably close. <laughs> if Disney animatronics, it would have done that. Okay? It's but the thing is, it said, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, really. Well, that fit like a glove, didn't it? Yeah. <laughs> All I've seen is he's found that one, and he said, okay, now I've got my platform wherewith I can talk to this whole bunch of people. And the nice thing is, the way he presented it, was he presented it as, I know more than you, but you don't realize it. Because he said, I see here, you have hundreds of gods. But would you like to know the one that put it all together? And all he did was pique their interest enough. Read the story. The temple was full. The outer court was full when he spoke. Why? Because he spoke with authority. No, he didn't. He spoke with truth. And the truth is the integrity of God. And the integrity of God is the authority with which he had to speak. Yeah, it wasn't his own. Because if you remember one of his books, 
uh, he said that, that uh, other people hear him and they're ridiculing him and saying, if you could see him when he's over here and be there when he's talking, it's very unimpressive. Exactly. He just doesn't exactly. look he like was he not knows anything. Correct. Correct. It wasn't like listening to Adrian Rogers with his yeah. phenomenal baritone voice and tripping a phrase and all that kind of stuff. But whatever it was about him, it pulled people in at all times, all right? And that's what he's talking about here. Now, since integrity demands integrity, holiness demands holiness, righteousness demands righteousness, justice demands justice, self-righteousness is totally excluded from grace mechanics in any of the adjustment to the justice of God. Now, here's your list. Okay? God's list is over here. Your list is a big zero. His list is race. Nothing there. All right. How do you lean on grace? By not having the feeling you have to pat yourself on the back. Then that'll work. Anything else? You receive on the one side from him and you release on the other side. Okay. That's the side of you. Okay. I'll go with that. Is there anything simpler? Praise God. Mm -hmm. You're in charge. I'm going with your glory. I'm going with your integrity. I have no clue what page you're on half the time, but I want to be with you. One of the things I like, he says, God himself says in the Bible, or had someone write, is that he lives in the midst of your praises. Oh, yeah. Sure. He That's what I say. Go ahead and read the, go ahead and read the third and fourth chapter of the Revelation where the angels come through and they glory, 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 mm -hmm. glory, 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 glory. Why are they glory, glory, glory in? Because they're in the presence of God. the Almighty. Well, I don't think anybody really grasps the fact that you have the Almighty hanging out inside your body and you don't realize you're in His presence all the time. That is something that they don't, that they just don't shove around as much anymore. The they things, used to, one of the things but really, they don't. One of the things that really impressed me is that people are spending way too much time in begging and pleading for God to, to be there with them and do things when they really ought to be saying, God, you are in me already. Thank you Correct. for the help you're going to give me. Correct. Like, that's what trusting him is. Well, and that's, but, but the theme is, is how do you learn that? Say it. So yeah, you, first you've got to become a Christian. And then there's people who understand. I've got people I know that don't know Christ, and they say they pray every day. Who are you praying to? I have no clue. <laughs> I ask. Exactly who? Oh, I'm praying to God. How do you know he heard you? Did you ever talk to his intermediary? Have you introduced yourself? <laughs> and, and, well, and the thing is, is most of the time they say, well, yeah, God listens to me. They keep hanging that big God word up there without anything else with it. Well, all you do, how do you get them to go past that? I said, let me ask you a question. I need you to call home and tell your wife you're going to pick up milk on the way home. Okay. First thing he, what's the first thing he does? Reach in his pocket and gets his cell phone out. I said, sorry, Hosh, you don't know Jesus. Give me the cell phone. Now call her. I'll tell you what I do. And they can't. The thing is, I write it down somewhere. <laughs> well, write it down somewhere. That's AARP stuff. But yeah. yeah. But the thing of it is, is when you do it that way, now what have they automatically done? Yeah. Well, I can't call if I don't have a tool. Mm -hmm. Well, please understand something. Jesus Christ is your tool. He's the, He's the only one that can dial the number. Holy Spirit's <coughs> the only one that can type in your text. Why? Because he transforms it into whatever it's supposed to be when it takes off for heaven. Um, one of the ways we can make sh not make sure, but like help, you know, make our, our days be in the God column instead of our column. Okay. Is to start out the day and ask the Lord to go before us and make the day spiritually valuable. Sure. So that instead of doing it our way, we do. I mean, things get derailed. We're human. But at least that sets a precedent for being proactive instead of reactive when things happen. Correct. He's already good. gone before us and can kind of maneuver it. Yes. And things just kind of fall into place a lot. That, that won't easier. hurt a bit. And then one thing you have to do also when you're going to do that, if you're going to do it that way, do yourself a favor. Understand that your sin nature 
doesn't like that conversation. No. Right. And Satan, <laughs> okay. Satan Just so is you know. listening also and wants to derail it. Correct. So what you need to do is if you're going to do that, and it's wonderful to do it that way, but understand this guy is going to be looking to cut into your line and, 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 and tap into your line and try to give you bogus information during the course of the day. How do you know whether it is? Pay attention to it. What did the Holy Spirit tell you again and again? I'm not going to give you anything that isn't truth isn't uplifting, isn't beneficial to you, isn't glorifying, isn't exhorting, isn't looking up instead of anywhere else. So just do that. And then when you hear these things, um, anybody keep wire, you got wire cutters. If you got something feeding something and you don't want it to feed it, what do you do? Cut it. Cut it. Okay? And understand something. If you cut a live one, they're 45 bucks if you cut a live one. If you cut a live one, there's going to be a poof. Understand something. If this one's the one that's working right now and you cut it, it's gonna it's not gonna go over well. Number one, it's not gonna go over well with your Holy Spirit, and it's not gonna go over well when you when you're going over back over to this neighborhood. Why? This side of you is gonna say, What in the world did you do that for? That was a really good idea. And it, it just be wise. Say, look, I know it might have been a really good idea on a, on a good day with you, but it's never a good idea with God. And then comes the next phrase. Seemed like a good idea at the time. Seemed like a good idea at the time. That's right. Exactly. So that's basically what you're wrestling with as far as that stuff goes. Now, it says here, self-righteousness never equals integrity. No. Big, 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 big. Only plus R can do that. All right? So I want you to realize everything we do to try to jet. How many of you try to be good? Al said, that's no fun at all. I gave that up years ago, man. I'm just going with whatever comes down the road. No, I, I make it up. Go ahead. You, you, you try to be good? All the time. It's basically, <laughs> basically the, the hardest thing is I would try try to be good, but then I'm like, wait, but wait, forcing myself to try to be good is not the way it's, it's like, oh, man, now I'm not the decisive what I'm doing. That was a heck of a wrestling match there, aren't you? Yeah. yeah it's, it's, and, and But that's exactly what we're trying to say. And he says, I know that. I know what your sin nature wants to do. Give it to me. I'll show you what you need to do. I'll be with you. I'll talk to you during the course of the day. How does he do that? Scriptures pop into your head at the mere, the weirdest times and the weirdest scriptures. Once it's, um, how many of you remember Old Testament scriptures? Some people do. Okay, I'm sure Shirley Burns would. Okay, because she thought you know she thought I was crazy because I didn't use it enough. Well, you, they, you but should understand. be able to because the Holy Spirit, one of His current jobs, no, but, is to write His Scripture all over the inside of your walls of your heart, so you can well, remember. No, it. No, I write it inside the walls I'm working on. Yeah, that way when well, I, I open the wall too. up again, by golly, there's that Scripture. All right, <laughs> but here's the deal. Understand this. What I'm telling you is, you've got them in your head. How many of you know the Scripture in the Old Testament says, "But as for." My house. Oh, my house. look at that rascal was tattooed on the inside of your lid there. We will serve the Lord. You see what I'm saying? It's there. Now, why would you need that scripture? It helps. It helps. If I've got somebody coming into my house, and I don't know them, I told you more than once, as they leave, I pray them right on out with anybody that came attached to them. Okay? Why? Because as for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. Very important. And I want, this, I want the, the, the place that's a refuge to be a refuge all the time. Um, is it not a mission field? Um, it is to a point. Okay? But the problem is, I've got plenty of mission fields. I need a repository to take a break. And, and this is a heavy, it, it, I, I think, to admit, but I was <clears throat> her mission field. I can understand Because she that. should have rejected me outright, <clears throat> completely. And I did a 180, thanks to her, who saved my life, seriously. And uh, which got me more, you know, and then with the help of everybody in this class, and on and on, you know, you were there for the journey. Which, which is what the body's for. So I, I don't think anybody's not snatchable. No, no, no. 
You know, no, not at all. And everything's a mission. I mean, you want to have that kind of positive attitude. And the Lord did too. He wouldn't have thrown that verse in Peter where he wants everyone to come to a saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. But in reality, you happen to be one of the rotten apples that she could get a hold of. Okay. Well, there's no. Seriously, that sounds really that great. Do you want that picture? Oh, yes. You brought it all the way back. You were the pup. You were the hose. You were the puppy with the longest face when she went through the kennel. Yeah, that would probably be. All right. So, but you see, but you see what I'm saying? So, the, but but the thing is, is the Lord knew that way back then. Okay, that she was looking for strays. Okay? And when he said, this is the one I want you to take. This one has potential because I see it. Not I think it's going to happen. I see it. Now I want you to take it and I want you to nurture it. I want you to... And, and then what's he do when, he, when she does that? Sends you all the way out to Hollywood. That's not exactly sending you to the backside of the desert. That's not sending you somewhere where Jesus is going to teach you. No, that's not the case at all. You did happen to go somewhere that you could get a hold of MacArthur. Okay? Yeah, I got, there's a great story that goes with that one. <laughs> no, yeah. But all I'm telling you is, please, the plan is there. Do yourself a favor. Backtrack everything and look at the plan. It's really neat to see it when it's on. Anybody do uh, travel maps? You know, when you're going to go somewhere, you got it all planned out. Is anybody that organized? <laughs> that's called well, that's my tour. Is that, that's okay, my you tour. tour. Okay, yeah. you tour. All right. And I'm a okay. person. I like yeah. to see, I mean, okay. in a book I read, okay. I want to see where they're going, you know? So, I mean, yeah. And yeah. And it works for you. Absolutely. Right? With me, I'm looking, hey, this looks like a fun road. Okay? Uh. <laughs> you don't like that. I have to go with the flow. Yeah. 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 I understand, yeah. but it doesn't feel good. It doesn't, it doesn't feel right. <laughs> but the thing about it is, is yeah. the plan, the way that you guys see it is how God laid it out. He is totally that way. I'm sure we're a wild card on the... On, you know when you have... Have you ever seen the maps of the old war movies where they're moving the tanks and the ships and everything? You ever seen that one that's always over here doing something weird? <laughs> that was us. That was a cleric. Okay, why? Well, you know, the water's a little bluer over here. Let's take a look-see. When I was diving for stuff, when I used to go down off of Fort Pierce and dive out of the John boat, I was just looking at the barges and catching fish and lobsters and stuff. But the thing of it is, is I was, everybody always says, be careful when you reach onto a ledge and pull yourself down. You don't know what's under the ledge. Well, I pulled it under and there was a shark laying there. So I'm going, this is probably time to go back to the surface. But you don't want to go fast. Because you're going to draw attention. Because, yes. So the whole time you're doing that, you're trying to remember, okay, how do you breathe slowly when you're freaking out? And how does, actually, how does oh crap sound when you're breathing it out? I know. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds pretty garbled, let me tell you. So, so getting go back ahead. to the original yes, sir. thought, and that uh -huh. is this, is who's to say that whoever she comes in the house with who's n rotten, isn't part of was he supposed to be there? Um, he is you. very well, very well possible. You meet this person. He should. Is there a is there a softer way to handle that? Um, yes, because when they come in with one of mine, what am I doing with them? You're assessing. Um, not even that. That's not my job. Assessment is not my job. If they ask for assessment, I can give it. If they don't, I'm going to have to depend on what I put in their heads. To what they bring home. So and when they do that, then my job now becomes I pray for the Lord to do what he has to do, the Lord to open eyes if they're not open, to bring him into the fold if not be, and, or to make him leave. And, 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 that and without the shotgun. Well, <laughs> there's enough guns around that it's, but it's does, easy does to work. Does anything creep into your mind that says something like this? Maybe this one I'd better be a little bit more um, kit gloves with to, to not make him think that Christians are hard-headed, you know what well, I mean. Well, I will, I will give you this much. I don't mind telling the individual, hurt my daughter and you'll be gator bait. Which is normal with everybody. Right, so that's normal. Really? But that's what at, you the, did? at the same time, that's the carnal side of it. The other side of me is, what are, what are you bringing into my kids' lives? Yeah. All right, how, how am I supposed to respond to it? Right, and that's where you bounce back to knowing she's grounded in Scripture, so are you, yes. the house is. And please, this fits perfect. 
I don't want to be suspicious of somebody. Why? Because suspicion can linger. Okay? Say they have a, say somebody gets, say she gets married and the, the guy ends up being a, a, a real loser. And the suspicion that I have, I didn't listen to. Then I beat myself up over it. So I do it this way. Now I'm not in despair because of what? God's grace. And But then in that whole scenario, and I hate to keep slapping. No, 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 that's okay. But you're, you need to talk to yourself about what you just said earlier, which always. is turning over to the Lord. Always. And you're just, always, always, you're cutting, always. You're not cutting her enough slack. Correct. You're, you're, you know, Correct. you're making it about you and not him. I don't want, and, and that's why I say we're very, we try to be very careful not to inject ourselves into whatever comes about, just because of the human nature part of it. Is if mom and dad don't like him, I'm marrying him. Which could happen. Only a few times. <laughs> okay. So you see what I'm saying? So what I'm saying with all of this is. I know, I have to be wiser. I know what grace is. If the individual that's with one of my kids doesn't, I have to depend on them introducing them to grace. And when they introduce them to grace, Hallelujah. then you've got something that's, that, how did it come about? No shotguns, okay, no threats, no cinder blocks with ropes laying in a driveway, you know. Stuff that says I can make you go away. No hanging dummies from Right, there you go. All of this stuff, you don't have to do any of that stuff. Why? Because you're doing it on God's part. <laughs> you don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> How many bodies are there actually? <laughs> right. Right. Well, I try to put one next to every dog that I bury in the backyard. Yeah. This is slowly yeah. landing. Anyway, man and the dog are never part of it. But you know, she brings it home to you. There's a reason that she does that. Exactly. So well, that's she, the point I was making. She, oh, wants, sure. she wants some sort of feedback, even if it's. Uh, and that's why. Did you notice that this but guy's got something hanging they can out? They can I don't know how we segue. I don't want to be intruding into somebody's life. Okay? I didn't yeah. tell Marianne what to go ahead and marry him. Okay? I didn't. Okay? Why? You didn't know Marion. <laughs> <laughs> okay, why? Because she's she has a mind, he has a mind, they make them work. She has a mind, they have a mind, she has a mind, they all work. All I do is if there's a time when I need to interject something, I will do so. But I'm very cautious to do it this way. Because that's how you you cannot destroy lines of communication anywhere with lost people or saved people. Okay? If you knew some of the things I've said to Tom and Barbara that come in here, that big bail bondsman guy that's fighting cancer, that's doing pretty good right now, you would not believe it. But I can't, they, they, they are just, they are part of my life and I, I dispense information to them on a regular basis. Why? Because the Lord said, look, these guys are going to be here, do what I tell you to do with them. And that's exactly what happens in multiple cases. The, the, the only reason I was beating you like that is because in my brain, the picture you paint often, and I, I would like to believe it's not this, but it's a uh, uh, you meeting somebody at the front door. This is all uh, uh, with a Christian shotgun in your hand. Okay. A little heavy-handed, maybe. Well, no, and a no, Christian. No, I'm saying that's the. No, but the Christian mind. shotgun is going to be the Holy Spirit. Understand that. No, I'm just saying the, the painting that uh, sometimes comes out of how, you know what I mean? <laughs> right. You make it sound. Well, yeah. You know, like Kathy it's said, scary. Said, I'm scary. I'm scary. <laughs> you are scary. You, scary. People are scared of you. Okay. Well, oh, well, no. no the people that know you are not. No. But it's the guy that comes in. Correct. You know. All I'm saying is you've got, you, you realize that he's given you all the tools you need to depend on his integrity. I have got to learn to depend on it because the world is not going to tell me the truth. I'm out of time. Mrs. Adams has told me four times already. Well, and because people will start coming People will start marching in. <laughs> then what? We'll just invite you to join us. Hey, Bobby. Dale is up in Wildwood today. He had to go up to Wildwood to oh, work. work. He had to work on a vehicle. Okay. Okay. Let you know Did you catch up on him? Oh, yeah. I got a lot of it done. Oh, yeah, shit. The, the, the shower looks really good. Did it work nice. okay? Yeah, it did fine. Oh, yeah, what you did? Yeah, it was perfect. Okay. Yeah, I put a little uh, hey, uh, hey. water protection on it. That's on one eye. Okay. Just yeah, that's right. And uh, the uh, I just got to do the bathroom floor for them and I'll be done. Cool. They're really happy. Oh, I mess up my glasses. I apologize for hijacking the class. No, no problem. No. It's always so interesting. Talk about your diving experiences. Uh -huh. We need to put those Taiwan kids on there. Yes. Oh, oh, yes. Yeah. Now they are. Well, they was hoping they to have the first. Oh, they got four of them out already. Of, uh, 
I know they were taking double divers in and bringing them out because the kids couldn't swim. They had divers. They had divers. Water coming out great. That's wonderful. Well, that was great. So anyway, keep them in there too. All right, I've got everybody else on here: Ken, Amy, Mrs. Elton, James, Tom, Ann, Claudia, Gracie, Katie, Pam, Kay. Um, folks on the road, I don't know who's traveling, where, when, and how. Anybody home with sick dogs? All that stuff too. I put all the different folks on here: Al's folks, Dave's mom, and my mom. Uh, military stuff. Remember John Stewart, the gentleman that I work for over here, the lady that she and I have conversations about angels. He fell at home probably three months ago, and they didn't find a brain bleed for a month. He wasn't getting any better. Well, he went in and had surgery and took care of it. Now, he just got home Friday. So pray for him that he listens to them and does his thing. And also pray for a gentleman by the name of Luther Beck lives across the street from us up in, up in Georgia. Um, his wife passed away. They've been married for 62 years. So he was kind of in a funk. So at any rate, just... Keep them in your prayers. Ken, uh, Robert Locke, internal infection, being treated with antibiotic shots. Marianne, family issues. Liz, pray for my family. We had a death in the family. All right, we'll do that. And nephew passed away last Sunday from cancer. The one I told you about yeah. had just gone to his brother's house. Yeah. He was there two days. Well, all right. And then I, Kathy put Austin Durrett on here for his health. He's wrestling with cancer. So this, Keep all that stuff, put it on the fridge, whatever we have to do. Any contact with Debbie Lloyd? Uh, no, I haven't. I saw Jim at my office at Home Depot the other day. <laughs> <laughs> he said everybody was doing well. That's so <laughs> true. Staying busy. So, other than that, I haven't heard anything other than that. But they're doing fine. So, I see still going to church. Yes. That's okay. So, you know, it'll be they slackers talking to me at Home Depot. So, at any rate. All right? Um, and Shirley was doing okay, and I can't think of anything else right now. Carol's up in. I'm sorry. Carol's up in Georgia. Carol's up in Georgia wrestling with that piece of property again. All right, come on. I got to pray, Mrs. Adams. I have to pray. Thank you, Lord, for today. We thank you for all the different things you've done in your Word. Thank you for allowing us to determine the fact that you're the one we need to do. We don't have any at all. We depend on you and our plus R. Be with us as we leave this room, Lord. Allow us to walk as if we plus are in every way, shape, or form during the course of this week. And come back next week and tell us about it. In Christ's name, amen. amen. amen.